How's it going guys? So today we're going to learn how to make a torsion crossbow out of milk jugs. Hope you guys enjoy the video. The first thing I did was cut out the mold for the body of the gun. Then I just started cutting up a whole bunch of milk jugs. I used about 20 I think. Uh, heated them up in my toaster oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm just going to take off all the webbing that's on the side of the gun and I'm going to do that with the jigsaw. Alright, so I took all the webbing off and now I'm just going to start working on the grip for the handle. And I don't actually have any rasps or files that I can use so I'm probably going to be using my jigsaw, uh, some sandpaper and other stuff that I can find just to carve it all out. Hopefully that works. And here it is, the finished handle. Can you believe that was cut out with a jigsaw? Uh, I think the next part I'm going to be working on is the actual bow because that's probably going to be the most complicated part of this entire thing. Not too worried about the trigger mechanism right now. Now using a saw and a file, I'm going to cut a notch out for the bolt to sit in. And now it has a notch. For the trigger we're going to cut a slot right here. And how we're going to do that is take a drill bit that's the same size as your jigsaw blade and then you want to drill a hole here and drill a hole here then take the jigsaw blade and cut through here drill another hole here and cut through that and then you should have a slot right here big enough for the trigger to be able to move as much as it needs to so I drilled these two holes all the way through but then this last hole here only needs to be drilled out about an inch and a quarter not all the way through alright so now we got a slot and I'm going to cut the trigger out of a flattened piece of PVC pipe. So this will obviously be on the inside of the gun, but here's just a little demonstration. The string is going to come back and fall into this notch here, and then when you pull the trigger back, it'll push it back out and fire. I'm just going to cut the notch out with a handsaw. And the corners of the notch need to be round out so they don't cut the string. So I went ahead and made another mold, and the dimensions for it are 4.5 inches this way by 4.5 inches this way, and an inch and a half this way, and that's what's going to be holding our metal rod. So I think there's enough weight on it. Still warm. I'm going to cut out two one foot sections of this bar using an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. So these are what came out of the second mold. I'm going to be putting them in the front of the gun. And they're going to hold the bar. So I'm going to drill two holes, one here and one here. Both of the bars are in and now I've got to drill a hole here to put a bolt so that it doesn't fold back when you draw the bow. Alright, so now that sucker is pretty tight. Uh, it's binding it now so that this won't be able to move back and forth. So then once you put the paracord around it, it should be keeping it all completely secure and it won't move at all. Now I got a genuine handle-on leaf rake here. I'm going to be cutting it into one foot sections for the bow arms. I set up a little demonstration only using two strands of paracord. But how this is going to work is we'll just put the bar in, twist it, and fire it. Now the only difference is instead of using two strands, we're going to be using about 15 so we have enough draw weight. So I just finished this arrow catch out of PVC, 
and now I'm gonna cut the bottom with the jigsaw so it's not a square block and it's more comfortable to hold. Got the bottom all rounded out, so now I'm just gonna wrap the paracord around the bars and put the bow arms on. The limbs are on, the paracord is wrapped around it, there's about 12 strands of paracord on each one, and now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's loaded. Alright, so here it is all set. I'm just using a wooden dowel as an arrow right now, and I could put the limbs a lot closer to the body if the string was shorter, but just for testing purposes I think this will be fine. Test fire. So I ended up wrapping electrical tape around the bar so that it wouldn't slide forward and electrical tape around here so that it wouldn't fly forward that way. Okay, so this is how you set the bow. So here's a demonstration of the arrow catch and the trigger mechanism. Alright, so we're going to be testing three arrows. The first arrow is a blunt tip. It's just electrical tape wrapped around it, so it uh, shouldn't be too much. Uh, the second arrow we got is a wooden tip that's been sharpened with some electrical tape wrapped around it. And the third arrow is a target point with two Mentos wrapped around it. So, um, we're gonna be shooting that into a Diet Coke container and see what happens. Yo, look at these awesome fletchings! And also, these arrows show you this side up! And this arrow is called my favorite rocket ship! It also points out that the arrow goes that way! I'm um, sorry about that, so uh, I just wanted to show you that these fletchings are actually just made out of uh, Gorilla Tape and electrical tape for the notches on the back. So, they're not anything fancy, but uh, they'll work for what I need. Only went through two. Lame. Uh, three. Two again. Two again. Alright, we're gonna kill a polar bear. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh. It's good. I think it actually worked! <laughs> Now we're going to try to kill some of the polar bear's friends. <laughs> Cause we got him right in the mouth. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think a mento fell in. I think it did. Not bad. Alright, so now we're just spraying a little bit of uh, cooking oil on it so that we can light it on fire and hopefully it'll last a little longer. I'm sure this is safe. <laughs> that was the coolest thing ever.